Welcome back to Siren Blood Curse. We do have some urgent Miyako life-saving business to take care of. But first, we'll take a little breather and look at the altar display again. It has changed to a third form. From its innocent doll look to a really horrifying doll with a white face, like a zombie tied up doll. All to distract from the real important fact that the doll is in front of a triangular street sign. Triangular imagery being very, very important here in Siren Blood Curse. So, just keep that in mind as we begin Episode 6. ミヤコ、一緒頑張る。ミヤコ。ここで待つ。戻ってくる。待つ、オッケー。私死にたくない。一緒に逃げたい。村の外を見てみたい。こんな村大嫌い。ミヤコ、助ける。ミヤコ、
who also has a shotgun. So we're not going that way. We're going this way. Spider Shibito make a return, of course. They will be constantly harassing us throughout the rest of the game. This one was the only guard for another minecart. This is starting out to be a very fun level for Howard Wright. Boom. Kill him again. Just annihilate the shotgunner. Ragged all the hell out of him. Broke every bone in his body. Leaving his shotgun behind. And opening up a whole mess of additional objectives. Unfortunately, the elevator shut down. And the pump room, for some reason, has been activated in the meantime. The person who was guarding it got pushed down an elevator shaft by Sam Monroe. But now, some other enterprising Shibito has activated it and locked the door behind them. So, we've got a gun. Sure, that means we can take whoever is our current most aggressive target. We are at least equally armed. Oh hey, the elevator controls. Now we can use those. We should be just about done with this mission, all things considered. Now we're talking. Probably shouldn't waste shells like that. But uh, yeah, now we have a much more powerful shotgun. At least in close range. We no longer have to go into the first person aiming mode in order to use it. Just shoot from the hip. Also, we really don't need to conserve ammo. We have 42 shots. Not gonna run out of that. That's enough to kill every enemy in this level. 10 times over. Which we'll probably have to do because enemies come back to life after they're killed. But for now, I'm feeling pretty good about our situation. We want some. I got another shot for you. Give him the old vaccine. One shot, two shot. Cures what ails ya. Vaccines are not cures. Please get them as a preventative measure. We could go up here. We might want to do some sight jacking before the hand. That, of course, is where our pursuer is. Hold himself up at a dead end, right in front of a ladder. The time it would take us to get up the ladder, he would have us killed. So that is not an option. We can explore over here. Turns out it is completely empty. Bit disappointing. And this also is a bit of a dead end. We can push a minecart. We've done enough of that for now. There's nothing in our way at the moment. There is this gigantic hole in the floor. And if we really push it, we can faceplant our way down there. It's inelegant, but it does get us somewhere new. Looks like a spider. Sounds like a spider, at least. Don't know what that sounds like. Here's a guy mumbling about a key. We do want a key. So it seems like that's the way to go. Well, 
Let us instead see the order of our objectives. Knock out the Shibito brain to stop the spiders. Then find the Siren Key. The, uh, the pump room doesn't seem to be very effective at the moment. Basement still flooded with blood. And the elevator controls don't seem very effective. Because this elevator's still busted. We did see someone waiting over here in our sight jacking. It is... Centipede Headman. One of my favorite monster designs in the whole game. One of his legs is twisted backwards. We've seen that happen before. Back in the first level. And uh, yeah, his head is a writhing mass of centipedes. Connected at his neck. Wiggling as they are attached to the ceiling. This was the character design that made me really just love this game. I liked it up to this point, but now it is really something special. You don't see that every day. So all the spiders are going to stay down until that guy wakes back up. No key. Unless we can have it. There it is. He happened to be right next to it. He dug it up with that last shovel of dirt. And we're going to do something super logical. Take his shovel and leave our shotgun with him. We can then take these stairs up, but that is a dead end. Just leads to the other side of that broken path, which Howard, for some reason, will not jump over. Let's see what other options we have. There's a ladder. There we go. That gets us back up to the second level. Which is the last level before we actually get to the surface. And we have the siren key. Obviously, we're going to want to activate the siren. See what that accomplishes. Normally, it just torments everybody. And then slowly becomes background noise. Like any siren, it's basically a car alarm. If you missed that momentary flash of the Pursuer, it is Saiga, which is why he's so well-armed. But obviously he's going to come this way. Let's uh, track his movement. Anybody with vision? Someone's got to be able to see around here. No, everyone's blind, because they're dead. Well, we know we don't want to go down that staircase, because he's definitely going to be coming up. And we are less than well armed now that I have traded in my shotgun. This guy's back up. But he no longer has a shotgun as well. He's uh, pretty effective with his hammer, though. Not effective enough. One of the better executions in this game is the shovel kill. Right through the rib cage. Howard is uh, pretty damn strong, all things considered. Doing that without any leverage. This will take us down an alternate path to the mines. And I wanted to go this way, one, because it takes us around Saiga's path up to the surface, and another because 
This spot where I'm standing is where the Shibito brain can spawn. It could be all the way at the bottom level, or it could be right here in this hidden little alcove. Which is honestly a creepier place to find it. Because it has no fanfare. You'll just be walking around a corner and all of a sudden... Guy with centipedes for a head... Attached to the ceiling without warning. So by now, we should certainly hope Saiga has made it to the surface. Just to make sure... Yeah, we're not seeing anybody in front of us. Which is where Saiga was. Might as well investigate where he was, right? There is no indication that you would want to do this. But you do. You want to come over here and start digging. this place, it's not even funny! I mean, it's kind of funny. Fart sounds being what they are. Yep, that's another thing that'll really catch you off guard, much like the centipede Shibito. This game, uh, the whole Siren series, they love their weird tone. They will shift things up to comedy, just to be even more disturbing. And it usually works out. Let's see... That's not good. The spiders are back up. They're pretty low health. There's a lot of them. Just keep hammering through them, though. That's not even the main enemy. Now, that whole thing about uh, digging up the grave of... something very flatulent... There's no indication of why you would do that. Except here on this screen. Once you get to the next chapter... You'll automatically receive this archive item. And at that point, you will understand that you missed an archive item here. And then you'll go back and scour the entire level to figure out what the hell happened. Uh oh. This is happening again. Thought I was safe from spiders. Turns out I was not. Now, with all of them dead, we can keep an eye on this guy. We don't have our shotgun, so we'll have to be careful. Uh-oh. We're having a very awkward fight. Saiga is not to be underestimated, as we know from playing as him. He's the deadliest man in town. What I should have done was set a trap. But it's fine. Now that we're back here... It respawned us with our uh, sawed-off shotgun. And we don't need to dig up whatever that section of the mine was again. And it looks like the brain is still dead, maybe? Just to be safe. Yeah, you're good and dead. So the spider should stay down. And we should have everything we need to knock out Saiga.
Although... The siren isn't on. You can tell, because there's not a blaring siren in the background. So... Maybe we'll try that trap plan again. We know the path he's gonna take. Let's see if he'll fall for it. Just in case we'll head around a corner. There we go. Okay. He's down. And that was our goal. Therefore, mission accomplished. Whoa. I've never seen this kind of syncretism before. But it's definitely a sign of a cult. Oh, Bella, where are you? Melissa. I'm sure Bella's all right. She's quick, and she's good at hiding. Remember the time when she hid in the dryer? And we panicked. We thought she got That's kidnapped. That's one of those things I always liked about you. Huh. Miyako, Isho, Nigeo. You're alive. I was wrong before. I have to perform the ritual again. What? What are you? <laughs> so pretty. Think around the road, see a pocket full of posies. Sam Monroe. Always very animated while people are talking to him. But he found the sacred revelations. Meanwhile, um, we recovered Abana's memories, and she recalled that she is an evil sorceress who immolated Howard Wright. He probably wishes that he had stuck with her since the last time they met, and she uh, dabbed his gunshot wound with her habit, because now she seems to be evil. The evil laugh was a little much on her part, probably overdoing it. And we were so close to finally saving Miyako. Oh well. Perspective shift to Bella. What's she been up to? Been a bit of a while since we played as her. She promised she'd head to the Irizu Valley Church. Now we're gonna make it happen. And she has found a certain amount of peace here in uh, Hanuda. She's gotten so used to being here and it has become some kind of beautiful Lisa Frank wonder world to her. The pretty bugs. And the weird flickery sky. Uh oh. Fly shooby toe. Very dangerous when you're Bella. As you have no defense. Nothing could fly into me at any second. And down here, we might be able to lose it. Nope. It's too close. Okay. We sneak through here, won't be able to follow. This is the riverbed, which was dried up when uh, Howard closed the floodgate back in the last one of his earliest missions. So this area would not be accessible had we not done that. And when we did that, it said we opened up an archive item uh, later in the game. That archive item is up this staircase, which again, would not be accessible. They're getting closer. Okay. 
Round for it. Get the archive item. Miko's offering him. Okay, the fly's flying away. Whose grave is this? Miko's apparently. Either Amato works very, very, very fast and already has Miko killed and buried since uh, Howard Wright lost track of her 10 seconds ago. Or some kind of weird shenanigans are afoot. Now the church is right on the other side there. Bella is too short to climb up this rock. All the other characters can climb up it. Instead, we gotta go around. However, this uh, big log here, we can actually sneak under it because we are smaller than all the other characters. Would have been a shortcut had we not had the dry riverbed to work with. Uh oh, another one coming my way. Hey, someone's dead here. They're not dead anymore. Squeeze past while they're getting up. Yes, so far so good. A lot of close calls though. Ooh, who's this here? Another extreme mutation that late stage Shibito can experience. Oh, and Sol. Sol found his camera. He's ready to get back to work filming that documentary. Okay. We've been spotted. We can just hug the Shibito. It's fine. They're actually not aggressive. Maybe something to do with all the bugs in the area. Everyone's having a nice time. Give me a big smile. Soul is somehow much creepier when he's not trying to kill us. Just trying to take pictures of us. No thank you, Soul. And our gigantic two-story friend here. Also harmless as a kitten. We just get to keep on going. Shibitos be damned. We do still have the goal of reaching our parents. The Shibito aren't helping, but they also aren't hurting. Here's the Iron Gate. Into the West Field, but... I've already gone slightly too far. Because the pathway to the church is right next to the Iron Gate, as we know from previous playthroughs. There we go. We've reunited with our parents. The day saved. Daddy? Mommy? It's me, Bella! It's me! Bella? Daddy, Mommy, it's me! Daddy, Mommy, please let me in! Melissa, don't! Well, Bella died. And it was actually hinted at in all of her most recent cutscenes that we've seen since playing as her. 
She had what appeared to be a log hurtling towards her in one of the cutscenes. And then in the most recent cutscene we saw of her, there was Bella walking into the fog, sort of uh, slowly with a bit of a limp. And she was walking away from that very same log, which was smeared with blood on the underside. So yeah, we knew that Bella died in what appears to be an accident. Even with all the shoes are running around, she just uh, got crushed by falling debris. Odd. But bold that they would murder a child in this video game. Makes it kind of a waste that we had to sneak her all the way through the hospital. As dangerous and difficult as that was, just for her to end up dead anyway. But perhaps it will serve some greater purpose in the story. We can only hope. Ended up being a bit of a shorter gameplay segment because her level was a complete freebie. We could not fail it. And as a result, we are into the end already. We only got one new weapon, but it was a good one. The short-barreled shotgun. A two-shot capacity shotgun that has had the barrel and stock dramatically reduced for easy carrying and improved maneuverability. Very good for short range, no longer good for sniping like the long barrel gun is. Normally that's why Saiga has an advantage during the boss fight of sorts when you finally lure him out of the mines. But in this case he uh, pummeled us to death with a blunt end of a shotgun. Wouldn't even spare a bullet on us. Rude. So Amana has recalled lost memories and it's made her a worse person for it. Another thing we might regret from previous gameplay segments is getting her those memories back, because we did that. And her old character is effectively dead. She is now a new, evil character. Let's see what she recalled. The Holy Scroll, The Gift. The scene painted on this scroll represents the tale of when Kaiko, the object of mana worship, offered up his own body to save the lives of the starving villagers. It is forbidden to tread upon the sacred ground where this holy act is said to have taken place. And the person in the drawing looks like a woman with blonde hair in red vestments, which obviously has to be a mana. She did say in her, in her diary that she was worried the townsfolk thought she was the girl with the golden hair or something from legend. And this looks like the legend. Seems like the villagers, if they weren't correct, certainly had a good reason to think that. Here is the very obscure archive item, which was dug up by Howard Wright in the mines, the Gojaku Giant. On August 25th, 1856, a very tall man fell from the sky and landed near Mount Gojaku in Misumi County. The giant's bizarre appearance is illustrated in this drawing. His head was a full 18 inches long and his body was 9 feet long. He attempted to enlighten the villagers with his unique brand of philosophy, but the foul smell that lingered around him was so overwhelming it knocked out anyone that could have been within earshot to hear his teachings. So, a wide variety of gods visit the uh, Hanuda village. It's said to be on the convergence point of another world. So, strange outer beings stop by sometimes. One of them happened to be the god of farts. And uh, no one liked it. Instead of worshipping him, they appear to have buried him in the mines. This was also hinted at in the... let's see... The Mining Guy's Diary? Uh, there it is, Mine Worker's Journal. He said... There are reports from some of the miners of a foul odor lingering around a certain spot. That's where they buried the god of farts. It might have been like a mislead to make you think they were burying bodies or something. But no, 
another outer deity who was just gross, so no one liked him. No religion started around that guy. A complete non sequitur, but very hilarious. Now, Salmon Rose Notebook. He has also been keeping track of uh, stuff. This is all stuff from before he went to Hunter the Village, though. Although we did get it when we investigated the church. And he received this, the Sacred Revelations, which we've had the entire game. So, Sam was preparing a lecture on syncretism, the $5 word that he just casually dropped while he entered the church. Syncretism is the combination or reconciliation of varying practices and beliefs. Religious syncretism. Example 1. A Roman incorporation of Greek deities. Bacchus equals Dionysus. Example 2. Christmas and Saturnalia. Example 3. Western religion and Native Americans. Ask students if they can think of any examples. He was preparing a lecture on syncretism and happened to walk into one of the most extreme examples of syncretism in the world. Granted, it's a bit of insider knowledge that he would even understand that it's syncretism. It's the mono religion and whatever they worshipped beforehand. Which he doesn't know about, so... Pretty good insight on his part. Encounters John Titor, producer. Japan location assistance for Sacrificial Special. Town of Hanada, Sacrificial Ritual, and Unique Local Religion. Village Lost in 1976. I better mention to him that I can read Japanese, but can't speak it at all. I don't have time to ask, but I'm sure they'll probably have an interpreter anyway. Doesn't look like they did. It looks like it was just Sol and Melissa. And Bella probably was not ready to uh, serve as interpreter. How did he know me? Ask when I get back. On the to-do list is also find a babysitter for Bella. Several names are crossed off. Heather, Sarah, Brenda, Louise, and Alex. Nope, none of them were interested. Bella's too much of a troublemaker. And now she is no more. He probably should have tried one more name, I guess. Now for the final one, the one we actually had to find, Miko's offering him. Check the ancient grave to find it. O oh, most holy and powerful Lord of the Heavens, we beseech you to accept this, our humble offering of Miyako's soul. It is only by your grace that we may remain free from suffering. So, clearly this is Miyako's grave, and it is said to be ancient in nature. Now, it seems very obvious that at some point, our 2007 characters stumbled into the year 1976 somehow. But, that would mean that Miyako was either planned to be buried and they set up a grave for her in advance in 1976, and then she didn't end up using it, but then it wouldn't be an ancient grave, it would be like a 70s grave, which few people would call ancient. So maybe one of Miko's ancestors had also faced the sacrificial ritual? Who knows, we will learn more as we progress and recover the remaining 50 archive items. There is much more to do and see in Siren Blood Curse. Just as our various conflicts were about to be resolved, they ended up compounded significantly. Hopefully we can begin to save what characters remain next time.